Please excuse the mess. We're in the process of moving our workshop to a bigger space, somewhere where we can have guests here to talk and also somewhere to put cool new tools. Uh, while we were moving, we came across a Nixie tube collection. Nixie tubes are glass tubes with digits inside, and when you apply the right high voltage, they glow with neon. And we'll put some B reel up there so you can see what that's like uh, before we get to the end of the demo. But we've got a, a selection of them here. Here I've got a uh, Four different types, a long bar tube, a common IN12 digit Nixie. We've also got some of these with characters instead of numbers inside. I like those. Those are my favorites. Uh, here's a stand-up type, and here's a little tiny IN2, I believe that's called. Like most respectable geeks, I've built up a hoard over the years. Uh, here's a box full of different old tubes, and uh, here's a box full of aging bits of yellowing foam and old Ukrainian newspapers that has sockets and more tubes and all sorts of stuff inside of it. If the comments on the blog are any indication, I'm not the only one with the closet full of Nixie tubes. Uh, a bunch of you have them too. We showed some of those pictures at the beginning. You know, it's a great first project is to make a Nixie clock because it combines a whole bunch of different elements. You have a switch mode power supply generating 180 volts, so there's some danger. You've got antique Russian you know, glass and tubes, so there's some intrigue. And it may involve a microcontroller, maybe a serial protocol or, or muxing, a binary to decimal converter, and uh, of course, some sort of real-time clock to keep track of time. So it's got all of these different elements that you learn so much about electronics with and give you so many fundamentals. But like most people, I keep my Nixies stored in boxes and hoarded away in closets, even though they're really cool tubes and they're, they're not getting any younger. So I thought, why don't we make some big thing that uses all these Nixies and puts them on display? And then we'll put it behind here in the new workshop studio. This is the basic Nixie tube module we came up with. Uh, it takes two IN12 tubes. These are digit tubes, or sometimes there are symbols inside of them. They're really, really common, and they're really cheap still. You can get them on eBay, boxes of 100 of them, for you know, 50 cents a piece. There's also sockets for them. So in the carrier board, we can fit two IN12 Nixies like that. One of the problems we had was we didn't quite make the openings for the Nixie holders quite large enough. So they don't quite fit perfectly. We have to go through and manually file it down or maybe use a Dremel tool to enlarge that a bit. The module itself has a front plate that holds the Nixie sockets and then a back plate that has the electronics. Let's take a look at that. These are binary to decimal converter chips. So there's four pins that are inputs and they control which of the 10 digits inside the Nixie tube lights up. On the carrier board, we've got two to drive the two Nixie tubes on front. In the middle, there's a common 74595 shift register. Uh, so what happens is we'll clock data in uh, from one side and load up whatever values we want on the Nixie tubes. And then if there's more than one module in a row, the data just continues out and we load up the whole set and then bump the latch and the data goes out to the chips and it updates the whole board at once. So it's a really simple serial protocol. We can drive it with an Arduino, the bus pirate, whatever. And as part of a demo at a Maker Faire or whatever, we can hook up a logic sniffer and record the activity and show it on the screen so you can see it change and you can see the data actually go into the big blob of Nixies and, and how each one gets lit up. After a little bit of a set change, I'm back, and now we can try out the Nixie tube thing. So here we've got a single module held together with standoffs. The Nixie's not secured in there yet. Um, chips on the back. Here we're connected to an Arduino, Shock's absolute favorite microcontroller. We're running a simple 595 library. We're just writing the numbers 1 through 10 continuously into the tube. The Nixies need a power supply. The power supply takes 12 volts from the ATX breakout board and steps it up to 180 volts that we need to light the Nixie tubes. So we've got here an open source power supply from Nick DeSmith, I believe. Uh, usually we design our own, but we're in a rush here to get this done by New York, so we just went with something ready-made. It's based on the Max 1771 chip, I believe, and it's not cheap. These cost about $25 each for us to build four of them, uh, so that's quite expensive. I prefer to do something cheaper, and usually we just hang a little switch mode power supply off of a microcontroller, and then you almost get it for free. But we didn't have time for that, and we need a whole lot of current, and this is a proven design that can kick out quite a bit of current, so we're going with this. Now everything is powered by an ATX breakout board here connected to an old 
computer power supply unit. Everybody's got one of these around and the breakout board converts it into a useful lab supply with some overcurrent protection for you know about 13 bucks. So we're big fans of this. And if you notice, it's actually in our new laser cut acrylic case for the ATX breakout board. I like that a lot and it's going to manufacturing now. It should be available in a few weeks. So to test it out, let's kick on the power supply. The Arduino starts up, you can see right away, we've got some numbers counting inside of our tube. Let's measure the voltage across the high voltage supply just to check it out. 180.2, perfect. So over the next couple of days, we're going to assemble a whole string of these. Hopefully we'll be able to pack them up and take them to New York to the Maker Faire with us. But that's not the only tube we have. I'm gonna clear off the desk and we'll bring out some VFD tubes and take a look at those. These are also tubes, but they're not Nixie tubes. These are vacuum fluorescent displays. They use a lower voltage, but a lot more current. This one is a IV22. It looks a lot like the IN12 Nixie tube. Same shape, same socket, same everything. So we wanna use these in our display too to give it some variety. We won't get to these this time because they need a whole bunch of current at 34 volts and we don't really have that available. But we do have are these little tiny Nixies that we picked up on the street corner in our tour of Akihabara, Tokyo. These only need a single 12 volt supply. Take a look at this data sheet. The data sheet's in Japanese, but you can probably get the gist of it. Here's the pinout for the VFD tube. It takes a single 12 volt supply through the grid. And this is called the filament through here. One side of it's the cathode and connects to ground. The other side connects to the 12 volt supply through a 560 ohm resistor. That gives us about 0.6 volts after the drop over the filament. And then to light each segment, we apply 12 volts to them and they'll glow. Now the breakout board's on and the tube is powered up. I've got this connected to one of the segments and we put 12 volts on it, we should see a glow somewhere inside that tube. So keep an eye out. Now let's light up all the segments for something slightly more spectacular. Touch all the segments to 12 volts and every segment in there should light up. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Follow the blog to see more updates on the project as we build it, as well as previews of all our new prototypes. We'll be back next week one more time, and then it's off to New York for the World's Maker Fair and the Open Hardware Summit. If you're in the New York area, please stop by and say hi. We'll have stickers, some free PCB codes to give away, uh, maybe some prizes, scratch and dent stuff, whatever. We'll also have whatever comes with this Nixie project uh, and some other cool demos to show off. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Where's my alligator clip?